everybody, I'm Jordan. And I'm Kirk. With PDQ.com. Uh, we're talking about printers today. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but this is an idea we had a long time ago, right around the time we started having all the uh, printer spooler exploits. So we kept on pushing it back. I think we've been trying to talk about printers for a couple of years now. So I'm kind of excited to move it off the yeah, list I've, of subjects. I've been really uh, kind of impressed with how well PowerShell can manage printers. I, I was too. I, I, I wrote it uh, during remote work. And I was testing on a home printer that wasn't enterprise, and it works the same enterprise or home. It was. It's uh, yeah. It's been fun to tinker with. And I think uh, we're going to show that it's probably a better use case for home or very small office environments without mm -hmm. AD. But it is a tool to keep in mind if you if you need print deployment. Mm -hmm. And I guess one thing knows with printers is they're just they're dumb. They are. They don't have a lot of logic built into them, so that's why people there's a lot of struggles with them just because it doesn't take much for them to just not work the way you want. So we're, hopefully we can do some things to take some of the management off of people's plate so they can yep. focus on devices that don't suck so bad. Yeah, printers are always a hassle. And the, one of my frustrations is you can leave them sit for six months and return to them and something will stop working after no changes, especially with ink printers. Uh, luckily in enterprise, you don't come across ink too often. It, it seems to be, I mean, printers are becoming, I guess, more and more rare, which is, yeah. I think, every, every IT person has to enjoy that. Yeah, I mean, consider sending it digitally instead of printing it, save a tree, but printers are still necessary. Uh, I guess the first thing we want to cover is we love our products, and it does do a lot of things great, and it handles printers, as we'll show. All true. But the first and four, you want to go uh, group policy if you can to handle I, that one. I think so. If you have a uh, Windows Server environment and you've paid for the, the licenses and you can use the print server, it works really well. Yeah. All right, and so we came and we turned one of our machines in there into the print server. Yeah, and actually, I want to do a quick call out. Well, okay. This process we're going to show, I came across uh, on a YouTube channel of a guy named Robert uh, McMillan. He was very uh, succinct and quickly delivered this content, and he also claimed to be one of the people who recovered emails that put the Enron executives away. So he's, he's out there doing good. Wow. Printers and, you know, stopping crime. He, I mean, he brought down a major organization and helped us with a better po a way to handle printers. Yeah. Equal. Yeah, so check out his stuff. Again, it was Robert McMillan. Check him out. All right, let's proceed. All right, Eagle, on our print server, we're just going to go to Tools, uh, Print Management. If that's not showing up there, that means you haven't installed the role on your server. Yep. It takes just a few minutes to do that one. Uh, I named this one Clever Name because uh, that's as clever as I get. Yep. Uh, the way we're talking about it, initially we are going through, we had logged in, and we were building the group policy. Yeah. Uh, going through all that, and it was just, there's a lot of work that goes into that. Where this way, if you get right-click... On the printer, not on printers but in general. I think before we do this, we want to show that there's not currently a deployed printer. No deployed yes. printers. All right, so we're back to clever name. Right click, and you can just deploy with group policy uh, and browse it. And so what this does is I have a name for you, by the way. Okay. Uh, pr print Eastwood. Print Eastwood. <laughs> That's a really nice. good one. Oh. Missed an opportunity. Now, now Printatron. Or Disney. How dare you disparage Printatron nine thousand? Can, can you can you rename it now? Uh, you got 25 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we saw my work with paint on label making, and it was not pretty. Yeah, we added the 9,000 in the pre-show, and it was not a rapid process. <laughs> we don't, let's just move forward. Uh, so I was just after you go to the deploy objects, go to browse. If you use the default, it's going to build a policy object that just goes to the root of the domain, and it's going to apply that printer everywhere. Yeah, and... Just it, to make sure, it, it will link and activate this policy if you set it up here. Yes, instantly. Yeah. yeah. So if, if that's what you want everywhere, fantastic. Uh, I think in the video example, he used the default domain. I'm not yeah. a huge fan of that. I like to keep the default domain as what it is. If it is a printer that will be used by everyone, I can kind of see it. But in general, yeah. I'm not a big fan of, of uh, adding to the default domain. Yeah. So this is the screen where if you've already broken up your Active Directory into your OUs, you'll pick the proper OU for the printer. So and it will map it there instead of globally. Yeah, IT, and they're just going to build a new policy, and then we'll name it print policy. Yeah. I think, shouldn't we call it print Eastwood? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Giving print. a much better name. Well, that, that'll, that'll name the policy, but it won't name the printer. That's okay. We'll name everything from here forward print Eastwood. I like it. <laughs> so, so print Eastwood, and you don't have to do any of the settings. It just, by default, is going to uh, build everything forward to point yep. that printer out. And then just, we're doing by computers. That's... That's up to the user. If you want, it's machine specific. That's fine. If it's user specific, yeah. normally if there's more of a Wi-Fi than a than a Ethernet setting, probably user specific might be better. But 
in this one, we're, we're just going com, uh, computer polish with that. Yep. And if you, if you noticed, when you hit add, the option of user or computer dropped. But if you look at the field that it created, that's where it's set. So once you hit add, it resets that. You'd have to select a new GPO and add another printer if you wanted to do it again. But everything is there, and it, it looks correct. Mm. All right, you guys so, are good. I'm sorry, just in the chat, the device formerly known as Prince is fantastic. <laughs> oh, I have a Purple Rain shirt. Oh, oh, it's well. my favorite shirt. Thank you, Brad. That is an amazing yeah. name. <laughs> the device for my honest prints. That is my new home printer name from now and forever. So now they have the, if we go, if we take a look at uh, GPO, you can just see in the objects, what did I meant to uh, print something. Print Eastwood. Print Eastwood. Thank you. Print Eastwood. It, it builds the policy automatically. And if you go into the details or the, I'm sorry, the, the set to generate the ports, you can see that it adds everything for that connection. This is just the basic one. This is just it's going to yep. whatever your settings are, it's going to apply that out there. But with GPO, if you want to get very granular and specific, like you can have it where based on IP subnet, if you have it locked down that way, wherever the machine plugs in, it's going to install all of the closest printers to it. Like you can get really specific. We're not diving into all of that. Just we're showing how easy group policy can handle it by default. Right. And, and this, then, this tool built into the server management uh, suite. It really simplifies this. I was uh, actually impressed when when we first came across it. It's a nice way to manage printers. Yeah, so I I think between all that, it took us ten minutes to build everything out and and run with it from there. It's is quick, and then uh, yep. the printer's going to go wherever we want it. But not everyone has access to to group policy either. It's restricted to them for some reason, or for some reason they don't want to run printers yeah. through it. So there just needs to be other options, which is where I like to use. Yeah, that's where PowerShell comes in. PowerShell. Yeah, surprising to everyone who has has watched me before. I'm I'm pro PowerShell for doing things, and even with PowerShell, what? Even, <laughs> even with PowerShell, there's a couple of uh, different ways to go about it. If you have a print server, it's one line. It's easy to go. So if we just go, at print server, we'll open up the PowerShell here. Uh, the first line just add printer with a connection name to where your print server is and the name of the printer. That's it. If you want to make it the default, there's no built-in command for PowerShell for changing the make a default printer, but you do get some instance with the class 32 printer, and then we're grabbing the name that we wanted there, and then it's just invoke sim method, and you can set it as the default printer that way. Uh, so, so it's two steps, one to, one to install the printer and one to add it as default. Yep, and the reason it's two steps instead of one is when I first built it, I thought one of them would need to be logged on using the other one was not. And I was incorrect. They both have to be logged on users. So you could condense into a single step, but just uh, I didn't. So if you don't select logged on user, uh, the result is a failure or it installs partially? Uh, it, it doesn't give you a failure, but it doesn't install because the, the PowerShell is going through and installing it on the user basis, not the machine basis. Okay. So that's an important setting to remember if you're going to do this as yeah, logged so on user. Yes, this one. They have to be logged on user. It will go through and it will install it in that way. If they're not logged on, it won't give you an error, but it's not going to install it either. Uh, with the print server, it's not a big deal. You can just send it out again when they're logged in. It'll go without. There's some complications, which we can we can cover that later. But let's uh, let's see if my uh, script actually works. Here I'm gonna go. send it out to uh, Tweety. Truth. Tweety. Tweety Bird. And I just said logged in, and I have logged into all the machines here, just so we can kind of see it. We should see it pop up here, just a bit. I'm not sure. It shouldn't take too long, but yeah. we want to take a question while we wait. Yeah, uh, just to make sure, if you're not logged in, this won't succeed, right? The user must be logged in. Or the user has to be logged in and log on the user okay. per user instance. All right, Chase, you ready for a question? Let's do it. All right. All right. Oh, oh my goodness, it's that's me. This is why I forgot. Anyways, <laughs> question. Has all the snafu with the ms updates breaking printer server break, breaking printer server slash client behavior changed the your opinion of using gp versus pdq to deploy printers anonymous so, all right whoops <laughs> <laughs> i think that was a uh, clear it from, kelly don't be I watching so. this way yes. it's okay you know, Kelly, it's really his fault. He should have been here. We'll just cool. proceed. <laughs> <laughs> Got anything on this one, guys? So, well, there's been a couple of, of printer issues. The, there was the a whole bunch of zero, I, zero days, yeah. but those were with the print spooler service, which is individual machine, not the print server. So that didn't change anything. The other one with updates that are messing with print servers, 
uh, wallets have an issue having something that can work around it or still make a function while it's not there, I think would be preferred. But yeah. well, once you get the print server back up and running, I would still prefer to use GPO. And even in this case, the first PowerShell example we had, we, we still use the print server. With a, I mean, we'll go over how you can do it without that in, in just a bit here, but my default, still use the print server, still use GP, GPO if you can. Yeah. But Just in general, even if Windows print server was secure, printers are not secure. In yeah. fact, printers are now snitches. The <laughs> companies design them to call out and tell their corporate you know, overlords how much your resource usage is, your printers, try to notify you when you need ink. Um, when I set up networks, when I set up printers, they go on their own VLAN, and that VLAN can only accept inbound traffic from my other subnets. It can't call out to prevent that type of... Uh, it prevents them from reporting, but also if someone were to take control of a printer, it can't go anywhere from there. So uh, in addition to the question about being worried about print server, um, that's a concern, but printers themselves are notoriously insecure, even if your print server was secure. So always consider your network environments when you're deploying printers. It's just everything about... Printers is dumb. Yeah, they're, I mean, it, it, assume an IOD, it, they're as secure as your fridge, and your fridge participates in botnet attacks, most likely. So, <laughs> But you secure. can play Skyrim on some fridges now, so. Well, finally, we're getting there. I mean, forever <laughs> thought, you know, I'm really looking for something to eat here, and I'm bored. I'd like yeah. to play Skyrim while the fridge door is open. Yeah. Finally, yeah. after two straight only, days of Skyrim. Only in vertical mode. Yeah. When I stand up to get a refill of my soda, I can keep yeah. playing. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Technology is getting us there. Yeah. Right, can we pull up the computer screen again? Just so Yeah. Yeah, right, you see there that installed pretty quick. Actually, before the questions up is already installing. And you see it's clever name on Coolcat just because that's what we named on the print server, and it was set to the default. And apparently, our toner and ink is low. That's not related to anything. I just uh, that's 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 the information yeah. for everyone at home. I I don't want to out us, but uh, both Print Eastwood and the device formerly known as Prince are far more clever than clever name. Yes, they kind of dropped the ball there. And... Yeah, yeah, we should have uh, taken the poll of the audience and then built a print server yeah, live. Maybe, you know, maybe we could start doing pre, I mean, pre-podcast pre polls or pre-webcast polls. I like it. You could have invited me to your, uh, to your run-through. I won't make that mistake again, JJ. Watch your calendar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will. All right. If we're, if we're done judging me, I'd like to get on to my excellence. <laughs> okay. Proceed. <laughs> All right. Uh, the next part, and this is the one, if you don't have a print server and you don't have GPO... Uh, you can still use our product with, with PowerShell uh, to deploy it out there and then just have it broken down a few lines here. So this first part, I know we're running a different tool outside of PowerShell, but it's just I haven't found anything better for installing drivers or adding drivers than PMP Util. So we're just calling that and we're pointing it to uh, the INF file for our drivers, uh, which I down, I just went to Luxmark's site, downloaded it and yeah. got all that and copied it somewhere, and I put it in a in a file share so it can uh, be in there. So it's going to run that one. That puts the drivers on the machine so it can find it, but it doesn't necessarily install the printed drivers yet. Uh, so the, the next line down is the adding the printer driver. Uh, in my blog, I made a mistake on this where after the name, I went through and I specified the INF file. And you don't need to do that unless the INF file is, in a, is installed somewhere that's not expected, which most of it should be System32 drivers okay. in that area. So I had the INFL and it was causing errors uh, thanks to, and I already forgot, Trevor, who emailed me about that. He actually emailed me before we even announced we were doing this uh, this webcast. The timing was yeah. spectacular. That's convenient. Yeah. So uh, if you are using any of this code from the blog for installing uh, printers with PowerShell, uh, on the add printer driver part, there's a part where it adds an INF file. You can remove that and it will work better for you. Uh, one important thing is... Your drivers have to be signed. If your drivers aren't signed, then the install it is going to throw up an error and will fail. So make sure you're grabbing it from a, a, yeah. a legit source that has signed it. Otherwise, you're going to run into a few issues. Yeah, just a manufacturer website. Get the signed driver. That should be good. Yeah. All right, the next one, you just build the port. I named it Ports McGee because, once again, I'm, I'm clever. <laughs> yeah. I'm clever. And also, you just need the what's your name in the port. You could put whatever you want in there and then... Uh, the IP address. Most ports, if you're building it through the GUI on Windows, it's going to give it the same port name as the IP. There's no difference. Can we go ahead and modify your script to have the proper Printatron name now that it isn't Printatron 9000? Uh, we can, but we're not running from here. We're running with the package. So I'll change it where oh. in, the, in the package itself. Okay, we'll change it later yeah. then. I just want to make sure that we reflected the, the hard work that was done in the pre-show. Ab absolutely. We need to, need to get in there. And the last one is we're adding the printer. So we built the driver. 
we added the driver information, installed the driver, built the port. Now we can add the uh, printer, and then we're just adding all the information we put in there and giving it the name Printatron, or in our case, Printatron 9000. And then it's the same thing. It's not, it doesn't make it the default uh, out of the gate. And this gets some instance. And I just changed a bit. Instead of where object, I did uh, filter name. Uh, e either one works, and then it's the same invokes sim, and that makes it the default. All right, well, uh, let's let's see it work. And if we go to deploy, well, there is one small difference with the no print server, and that's the PMP util has to run machine level. So this one having the two different steps actually makes sense. Okay. Because this one has to run machine level. That puts the driver information on the computer itself, and then everything else has to be as logged on user. And then you said we want to change all these. Look, I'm not even printed on this. I'm, I would, uh, yeah. I'm printy. Printatron, what do we say, 9,000? That's the name. It's I, you know, I haven't done this times. with space yet, so we'll we'll find out. Okay, <laughs> I don't want to be that guy, but Printatron is spelled differently. Oh, yeah, thank you. That, that's actually very important, otherwise yes. it wouldn't make it the default. There we go. All right, uh, I haven't tried it with the space, so uh, we'll try it live. We'll see how it goes. Let's do it. So it's all the same, same code. Uh, step one, we are running as the... Deploy user, yeah, it's machine wide. And the next one we are running as the logged on user. All right. All right. And uh, we'll, Do you we'll hit run this save against... before you run that? Or? No, that's a good idea. We'll save it. And we'll run this one against two machines. It's uh, Claude and Egghead Jr. Egghead Jr. is uh, Windows 11. We just thought it would be fun to make sure it still works on those ones. All right. Let's see it happen. All right. I got to tell you, I'm. I don't know why I was confident before. All of a sudden, I'm not so confident. It's the space. I'm a little worried. Windows usually yeah, handles space, space uh, better. If this was Linux, that space would be your undoing. <laughs> so, see, uh, Dren, it takes a little bit of time while it's going again. Uh, do we have another question we could take? Yeah. Chase, you ready? Sure am. You got this, man. <laughs> I got it this time. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, I'm ready. Is there a good way to delete printer instances that correlated with our old printer ser with our old print server we have 200 plus computers on our domain and many of them have numerous orphan slash dead printers jeff p uh, this is a prime example of technical debt <laughs> uh, it's worth cleaning it up this is a, a bit of a project um you showed that your script can remove printers before but you have to know their names if they're aware of the names could yeah. they target a large group with that yep so yeah, first you're just on a single machine that has it, you're going to want to test the code to get it because uh, sometimes with the name, especially when it was added through a print server, as you see in my example code that I had, we have the server name included in everything, and yeah. sometimes that's not required. So uh, right there, the clever name and the, the cool cat. So you want to make sure you have the name absolutely correct on that one. Uh, luckily, if they were added with a print server, like they're saying, like mm -hmm. all the ports and everything, it shouldn't be such a big deal. Uh, but if it was added without it, then you have to re remove everything. Actually, we have that on some code down here where we have uh, remove printer. That removes the printer itself, and then if you try to remove the port in the driver before the printer, it will fail as these are in use. Okay. So you want to remove the printer. In this case, it'd be, I, I assume, you want to, like I said, test on your one machine that you know has it. Just uh, whack, whack, server name, whack, then the share. Try to remove that. Should remove it. But if the ports and everything else linger, it's just remove printer port and printer driver. It's important that you remove the port as well. Otherwise, it remains configured, uh, and that port will be reserved in your system until it's released. Yep. Okay. So, and we'll go here. Actually, we'll, we'll try to show that one live here. We'll read that one. Uh, let's see. So we have uh, Claude that failed, and if we go into the reason, you see I'd actually already sent that uh, Claude out there. So the printer port already exists, so it failed on that one, so it couldn't yep. install it. And we're just, I wanted to showcase that just so we could show what you need to do if it fails the first yeah. time to make sure it runs. Because if you just go through and run it again, the port's always going to be there now. So it's always going to be a problem. Yeah, but the, the logs are there for a reason. You know, you can yeah. troubleshoot. And all you need to do is go to Claude, drop that port, and then reissue. And it would go. It did, even without building the port, update the name to Printatron 9000. That's nice. So that, that part did work. So if, if we wanted to remove it manually, we, I mean, that's always a chore. Nobody likes doing things manually. Looking at the question I saw in the chat, someone said the from the print server might be put in the registry, so the remove printer might not work. In that case, you're going to want to use, we have a registry scanner yeah. uh, that you can use a product for a scan to find that registry entry. Then you can delete that if you need to remove it or change it to the new information to update it. 
whether with PowerShell or any an, another S scanner? So I think the answer is yes, it's possible, but yeah. he's going to need to look at your script examples, modify them for his environment, run some tests to make sure it's working, check registry for cleanup. In the chat, it's H key current users printers connections. I didn't know I put it in there. So mm -hmm. if it's in there, uh, if you can use the PowerShell, just the remove printer, if that works, fantastic. If that doesn't work, then mm -hmm. just build a uh, registry scanner in inventory, scan your computers, it should pull all that in there. But for that, just find a machine as your test case, uh, make it work specifically for that one, and since it was print server, it should work across the board for your environment. Right huh? Yeah, right. Let's... Uh... All right, so that one we failed on Claude, but we can show on the Windows 11 that it was successful. It was... Egghead does show successful there, yeah. Successful, and then the printer, Printertron 9000, I, I do like does that exist. Yeah, good job to the pre-show audience. You're doing good, yes. They, you know, that's why... That's why we, we pull the audience. They always it's, crush it. It's no print Eastwood, but it's pretty good. All right, but if we did want to remove uh, from Claude and try again, we'll just do remove printer. And since it did change the name on the machine from Printy to Printatron. Space 9000. 9000. We want to make sure we get the name right. It's going to run those three lines, and it's going to do what we're talking about. It's going to remove the printer, get rid of the port, get rid of the driver, and then we'll try redeploying, see if that works. Uh, so same thing we want. PowerShell, copy that in there, and as logged on user. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a try live, see if I can build a, a live package instead of just pre-built ones. Fingers crossed. Good luck, buddy. All right, and while that's removing, do we have other questions to come in? Sure do. All righty. After PDQ deploy printers, some users are not logged on. Is there a way to detect whether the printer is installed that can be used to keep trying to deploy the printer? Matthew C. Could you do it with a schedule? Uh, a schedule, another thing is you could have the... A step one be a scan where it does just the default scan where it looks for logged on users. Yeah. And then just have it as a condition of failure if, if there's no one currently logged on. And that way it will exit out if no one's logged on. And if it's on a schedule, the next time the heartbeat comes in, it will run again and try again. What's the most or the shortest time frame you can have a schedule reattempt? I'm not sure what the shortest time is. Uh, usually when we have something like that, it's just heartbeat. So if it's on the schedule and it fails... It has a list of successful things on the schedule, and if mm -hmm. it's not in the list of it's successfully run, every time it checks back in or the schedule runs for whatever setting, it will try it again. Okay. I'm not seeing it removing, so we'll see if we... Uh, it's not done running. Oh, I failed. Let's see why. Time to find out what I did wrong. More printers. It's in use. Well, it's the, the port and driver couldn't because they're in use, so the line one failed to remove the printer. So let's take a look at our code. Some live action troubleshooting yeah. here. Is I mean, do I have the, the name right? Let's take a look at I, Claude. I think again. that's the right name. So what happens if we try that uh, on the machine? See if we get the a better error. You're not messing around anymore. You're going right after the machine. That's right. This is getting personal. <laughs> Let me say Printatron 9000, right? So. Hmm. Is it the space? It equals. Takes it, take the space out, but it also renamed it. So I'm wondering if in the settings. Printatron. Let's go to the manage. Uh, it's still named Printy, so it named the. It, it aliased it. It changed, somehow. changed the alias. All right, so. I didn't know printers could have aliases. I did not. That's, uh, we, we learned something new. Take the 9000 out. Oh, thank you. That's what I'm here right. for. We'll try this again. I'm a, I'm a backseat keyboard driver. And, uh, I have no more confidence than I had. Last time. I think this is going to work. <laughs> that, that is interesting. So it changed the, the surface name to what we wanted, but in yeah. the back end, it was still what we originally installed it as. That is successful. Uh, successful. Yeah. So we'll go over to Claude. How do you fix sure that? Um, don't change I mean, your how do you change, how do you... mid deployment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... That's how, I don't know how we fix it, but that's how we created it, I think. Uh, so yeah. if, you, if it's changed enough times you can't follow it, you're going to have to run against the machine. You could do like a PowerShell scanner where it's just git dash printer, and that'll give you a list of every printer that's on there. And that should give you the names that you can use. Uh, other than that, yeah, if, uh, just, I guess, make sure you don't change names on the fly like we did live. Yeah. So for a printer cleanup, 
Um, and I might be talking a little wild here with because I haven't been in power shilling years, but could you write a script that does the git printer, builds an array, checks that array against names of approved printers, which you have, and removes those, but deletes everything else. That way you don't have to know what's there, what's there you want to remove, you only have to know what you want to keep. Yeah, yeah. so if git printer, if you don't specify a name, it's gonna pull a list of yeah. every single one, so you could just do a select name, put that into a variable, and then uh, that's easy, it's just, uh, we used it for uh, Apex packages. A long time ago, I had a good example, but it's basically these are the approved printer names. Yep. These are the ones that are found, and if what was found was not on the approved name, it would go through. You could do run remove printer against it and get rid of it. Yeah. That's how I might write. It'll I do take wanna... more time, but that'd be a much more graceful script and, and solution that would get them all except approved. Yep. I do want to bring up, Jordan, that your script wouldn't have worked anyway because uh, your printer was named Printy, and you had changed it to Printatron, and subsequently Printatron 9000. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So with your Printatron, that would not have, that still would not, would not have worked. No. Yeah. Uh, if I hadn't run it locally against the machine looked at it, I would have, uh, where we went through multiple names, we had to go look up the specific name for that one to get yeah. it removed. And then it worked great. So there's going to be some troubleshooting, it looks like. Yeah. So step one is settle on your printer names first. Step two is yeah. proceed but with testing. Your idea was absolutely correct. If you just build a list of approved names mm -hmm. and run all printers on it against those and remove everything that's not there, you don't have to worry about you have a right name. If it's not on your approved list, it's going to get rid of it. Yeah, that's that's how I would approach it is, is with you going need with to what's known good instead of trying to determine everything that's bad. Yeah. You, you need to run it also now, hold on, though. ports. What if you had, you said, okay, this is named Printatron, but it just happened to be, that was the alias and the actual name was Printy. So would you, it, you would lose that one, wouldn't you? You would. Yeah, yeah, you'd lose that one. It would get rid of... Well, well I don't know, because it doesn't remove anything based on the alias, so it's, it's going to go whatever the back end. So even if it looks correct, if the name on the back end's wrong, yeah. you're still going to want to rebuild it, so you just, I don't know, have it sync, maybe? Yeah, if you got into a printer name versus printer alias situation like we did, which I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably pretty rare, yeah. but if you have that in your environment, um, you know, it's going to be painful to fix it. So don't do what we did. I think we found another reason to hate printers. Oh, and we just did. The worst. A brand new one. <laughs> I'll, I'll reinstall it on uh, Claude now and just see if it actually yeah. works. I hope. I'm not, I'm not on a winning streak right now. Someone had a killer joke <laughs> in chat earlier, and uh, they said, I got 99 problems, and a printer is 1 through 98. <laughs> <laughs> now I want to know what 99 is. <laughs> it's probably a printer. <laughs> it's DNS. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. All right. Uh, well, Hey, successful. I was going to say it can take a question while it's running, but it uh, finished while I was uh, looking at it. We'll just banter. And they say a, a watch deployment package never finishes. There you go. Printatron 9000 is back. So that's just... Uh, is, it really, is it really Printatron, though? Yeah, let's go into the settings and make sure we're, we're not being lied to again. That was... Uh, it was actually not even the drop-down menu this time. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's So it is, it is Printatron 9000. Yep. Yeah. It's it's back. So if we use the print a test page, print a test page. Oh, you got to mute our mics. Yeah, I want us to print a test page, but let's not repeat the pre-show error. Now yeah, let's mute the mic. All right, here we go. If we want to mute us real quick, I gotcha. No ASMR for you. No, it is a very awful noise. Dun dun dun. dun. All righty, coming back. It's got text you on it. You need to hold it up like it's a a, a big achievement. We have we one. We can print in the web lab, so. <laughs> We made a paper. Yes, everyone else. <laughs> Tough luck. All right. And I did see in the chat that people were asking for the code. I should have put that up before. I will get that after the webcast. I'll go put it up, uh, and we can add it to a link for when the episode publishes. Yeah. And uh, the last part, and this was another email we got from a user. They use uh, Rico printers. I couldn't duplicate it because we don't have those for an example, but it's uh, Rico Print Driver NX. It allows you to build silent installers where you can also set all the settings. So which trays, which paper type. You can get really specific with that one, build a silent installer, and then just deploy it out. Sounds like Rico is trying to solve some of the pain points with printers. Yeah. Good yeah. So, so it sounds like if you have Rico, I would take a look at the print driver NX and see what that can do. I, I couldn't test it myself, but the idea of having something that is built for it sounds pretty awesome to me. Yeah, the, I mean, the Rico multifunction units that you see in larger offices, I've, I've never had too many issues with those. Those things are, are pretty bulletproof. But, so shout out to Rico. I've always, been, I've always called them Rico. Rico. That's probably Is correct. it Rico? I, that? I, I, have, I have no idea. I, I just thought it was Rico. Let's, let's, uh, let's, Rico's let's for when the audience. government comes and takes. 
<laughs> and it was oh, wait. Uh, you just said it was cool. I, I didn't get permission to use your name, uh, JB. So I'm, I'm glad you 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 uh, chimed in. But he was the one that told us about it with the email. <laughs> right on. Well, we do have three questions, guys. Do you want to take them? Let's take it. Yeah. <clears throat> All righty. If I have a method that works, is this better? Or should I switch to a different method if it ain't broke, though? Uh, that's Alexander in. I don't change what's working just fine. Um, I mean, for me, it depends on the method. I would assess the method for security. And if it was secure, as secure as the others, I would keep it if it worked. But if it could be improved. But, I mean, if it's working, the, the methodology of it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, holds fairly true. But there's a lot of unpatched systems out there that are vulnerable and not broke. So I would I would do a quick uh, review of it, compare it, and determine if you want to go through the effort. Yeah. If, if other options can help maybe automate some of it for new users yeah. where it's not done. But if it's not adding value, which is not, I wouldn't change a thing if it's working for you. Right on. Next question. Awesome. All right. Related to printers, is there an easy way to push out a font to all computers and users? Example, uh, need a bar code font for everyone to use now. Mark P. So I'm going to see if I can find it live. Uh, Brock, who writes for us, mm -hmm. just published a blog about deploying fonts. And we so. discussed in Slack. I think he feels that you could um, do that with, with PDQ Deploy. I don't want to quote him as saying that, but I, I believe this is something that uh, is solved. Yes, let's let's go to the, the finding it live because that never goes poorly. <laughs> well, here we got out. So that one's from Brig. I think that's an older one. Yeah, that's from 2020. Installing fonts with PDQ. That's a support one. Why can't I find Brock's blog here? Uh, is it linked in uh, Brig's post? Might be. I th was it specifically for Windows 11 too? I'm trying to remember if I had Windows 11. It it may have been. Yeah. So there's scroll Brig. to the bottom. So, uh, I assume if Brig wrote it, this one also works. We'll see if I can find. I just yeah. I tested Brock, so that one worked. I just can't remember off the top of my head. So I'll see if I can't find a link to it. So I think the answer is. Brock also did use PowerShell. Yeah. Yeah. Hit, hit the PDQ blog. Find the the story from uh, Brock around font deployment. Read through yeah, that. And I'll bet it answers your questions, but yeah, it should be possible. I don't have, we don't have search functionality right now, unfortunately. Yeah, it just went down recently, which is why I tried to do it from Google first. It's not an old one. Oh, got it. But uh, it's I guess it was a couple either. weeks ago. They disappear pretty quick. Yeah. You could try using your Google no, Foo by doing the lot. site colon pdq dot com. Yeah. Next there it is. is. Oh, you found out how to download and install fonts. So yeah. his was Windows 11 specific. Yeah. So between the two of them, all, but the, the answer yeah. for them and how to build the package is there. And he goes through and uh, what, what he had, we tested this one for uninstalling and removing fonts. This worked great. So if you have the font installer, if you follow the steps in that blog, it's how to download and install fonts. Yeah. That should get you going. Yeah. All right. I, we haven't this also does work on Windows 10 as well. I think Brock gets that point. <clears throat> Brock does get the point. Yeah. Last Sorry. question. Last question. Okay. Alrighty, can you update the local print driver for an existing local printer, Daniel M? I'm assuming he means with PowerShell. Uh, yeah. So I don't know how smooth it would be because in the one that we have, we do, uh, we we install the driver manually, then install the printer where mm -hmm. we specify that driver. I don't know if I've done anything with uh, changing the driver live. You could, if the printer's still there, you all the other information is fine. Uh. Install the new driver with the same thing and then remove the printer and then just swap it back in with the new driver listed. I don't know a way to change it live without doing an uninstall. Okay. It's probably possible. I just I haven't looked with the commands enough to, to give it. But certainly exact. you could remove it, update the driver and reinstall it with a script. Yep. But whether you can change it in place, we don't know. Yep. Right now. All right. Is that all the questions? It is. Yeah. Let's wrap, wrap it up for today. All right. Hey, uh, thanks, everyone, for for tuning in uh printers aren't fun so anything we can do to take at least some of that off your plate hopefully this gives you a good starting point uh this gives you an option whether print server no print server or gpo uh if you're having an issue with printers hopefully this gives you at least a good starting point and i will go and add the this code up onto github as soon as possible it will be a link when this goes uh up into youtube okay right, uh, for pdq.com i'm jordan and i'm kirk
Thank you so much, everybody, for joining the show today. Uh, remember, we do have a webcast every Thursday at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Tune in every Thursday, and don't forget to subscribe to the PDQ.com YouTube channel. Thanks so much for being here. We hope you learned something, and we'll see you again next week.